my fellow curious minds, I'm Dr. Becky, welcome to my channel. And today I want to talk about galaxy fashion. So you may have seen this kind of stuff around, it's like a printed fabric that you can get galaxy leggings, galaxy backpacks, I've seen people do like wall and floor galaxy stickers as well. So the reason that I want to talk about this is because it shouldn't be called galaxy print, it should be called nebula print. So some of you might think that I'm being a little bit pedantic here. Yes, I am all for science and fashion coming together, like at the Met Ball a couple of years ago, and it was like tech themed, that was so, so cool. And right now as well, my earrings are the shape of plows. See, can I show you? How cool is that? <gasps> it's the plow. Oh, <gasps> love them. The only other equivalent that I can think of is like if a company was advertising that they're selling like zebra leggings when in fact the print on them is a leopard. So that is the kind of thing that I'm referring to here, like how weird would that be? So as a scientist I look at something that's called galaxy leggings and I'm like, uh, no, that's a nebula, duh. Duh. And then I realised that duh isn't fair at all because, you know, people aren't scientists, it's not like you come across galaxies and nebula, it looks cool to do. And I think the problem is that the word ga galaxy has come in popular culture and on social media to be used to describe some colourful space scene. So I'm thinking about galaxy nails that people do or like painting galaxy cars or a wall in, in their house. And really what they're, what they're saying is that they have some stars with some pretty coloured clouds in front of them. So what is a galaxy and what is a nebula? So first of all, a galaxy is like a city of stars. So our sun is one star in the galaxy, the Milky Way, of like a billion stars. And we think that it's kind of like disc shaped, like really, really flat, has a bit of a bulge in the middle. So when you look up in the sky and people talk about seeing the Milky Way in the sky, you see it as this sort of like long, thin, milky strip across the sky. So then we also see galaxies outside our own Milky Way, so the most famous being the Andromeda Galaxy, which is another flat disk thing like our own Milky Way. But then you have things like M87, which is just this huge blob. Uh, you have the Sombrero Galaxy, which was probably once a disk, but is becoming a blob. And then you have things that just look really weird, like my favourite galaxy, the Penguin Galaxy. Yes, that is a penguin looking after an egg. And that is the best thing that you will see today. So galaxies are these huge structures which are like hundreds of thousands of light years across. That means that light travelling at 300,000 kilometres a second would take 100,000 years to travel from one end of the other galaxy to the other. So they're really big and they're separated by these huge distances. So Andromeda is one of the closest large galaxies to us and it's about 2 billion light years away. And you can get clusters of galaxies as well which can look really beautiful on the sky but nothing like our galaxy print that we see in fashion at the minute. So why do I think this should be called nebula print instead? So the word nebula is kind of a catch-all term for a lot of objects. It's Latin for sort of like cloud or fogginess. And basically they noticed that some of the stars in the sky appeared nebulous. So they weren't just like perfect pinpricks of light. They had some fuzziness or some gas and clouds around them. And so as time wore on and telescopes got better, we would resolve these weird nebula shapes. And even for a while, galaxies outside our own Milky Way, so Andromeda, was called Andromeda Nebula before it was known that actually it was a galaxy in itself. It was thought to be something in our own galaxy before Edwin Hubble came along and was like, actually, that is two million light years away. So today, the word nebula is basically used to describe any interstellar object made of gas and dust. When I say interstellar, that means like inside our own galaxy. So inter, in between, stellar stars. So in between the stars or around the stars. So something in our own Milky Way that is basically a huge big cloud of gas and dust. And when I say dust, as astronomers are weird about dust, it's not really like the dust that you find on your floor. It's basically anything that's not hydrogen or helium gas. I'm talking about like complex molecules, you know, like carbon chains or a bit of oxygen in there, maybe even there's a little bit of rock or like some iron. You know, basically anything that isn't sort of the simplest building blocks of the universe. So most of the pictures of space that people will have seen will probably be 
of Nebula. So my favourite image of space is of the Eagle Nebula. It's absolutely gorgeous. It was dubbed the Pillars of Creation because of these huge, big, tall pillars of gas where stars are basically being formed. There's very different types of nebula. One type is called a planetary nebula and that's when you've had a star explode, go supernova. It's thrown off all of its outer layers and you're basically left with this tiny remnant something like a white dwarf or a neutron star maybe or a brown dwarf no red dwarfs though no no sad the other type of nebula are like the eagle nebula they are star forming regions so this is where we're forming brand new stars out of this huge giant cloud of gas and dust which is going to provide the ideal conditions for stars to form you need molecular hydrogen you need very very cold gas and you need very dense gas as well the dust particles actually provide like a catalyst site for some of the reactions needed to kickstart the process of star formation. So you'll see that a lot of these images of nebula that I'm showing are these beautiful, colourful images of space. And I should say actually these colours, I don't want to disappoint you guys, but they're actually not real colours per se. So we don't actually point like a normal camera at the sky and take these photos at least as professionals, amateur astronomers definitely do that, but professional astronomy, which I think most of these images, just use basically what's called a CCD, it's just a light collecting device. <laughs> we have observe how, you know, how much light we're getting in the blue, how much green light we, we get, and how much red light do we get. And then when you put them all together, you can colour that red, green and blue, and then they add up to show you different features. Sometimes we also find that there is a very specific emission from hydrogen or from oxygen, which people will then colour a very specific colour. So for example, in this nebula here, the hydrogen is coloured so that you can see these regions where there's a lot, a lot of hydrogen and therefore like where the stars are going to form. So these nebula images are beautiful, they're colourful, they're these huge swaths of gas and beautiful stars forming and really, really pretty colour. And that is what the fashion industry is emulating. They are taking those kinds of images, therefore this print should be called nebula print. So we shouldn't be going around being like, oh, those galaxy leggings are so cool. We should be like, oh, your nebula leggings are cool. Or, oh, your nebula wall looks really, really cool. Oh, I love your nebula nails. But the thing that really bugs me is that a lot of these prints, like, they're fake. It's not real images of space. Like, it, like an artist has just come along and made them. And I kind of wonder, well, do you really think that you can make something more beautiful than what space made? How far away is Andromeda? Three parsecs to a light year, and this is kiloparsecs. And, oh my god, just tell me in light years. I want to say dust, I don't necessarily mean the fluff that is currently floating around in front of the lens. Hello. Like, how much blue light are we going to get from this? How much green light? How much... I get that green light, that green light. I 